They put a racetrack on a cruise ship. What more could you ask from Mario Kart? No, what more could you ask from Daisy? Considering she'd be the only one crazy enough to think this was a good idea in the first place. You begin on board the deck and it becomes clear enough that, wow, this place is pretty. There's banners hanging all about. The walls here have cleverly placed holes within flowers, along with stars, and the color of wood they use as the floor is orange, obviously alluding to Daisy's color scheme. After igniting you'll race along this metal walkway, where if you look over the guardrail, you can see what appear to be lifeboats, which, all things considered, will most definitely be necessary by the time this race is over. I like to think that Mario and the crew added these without Daisy's permission. If you listen closely, you can hear the ship's horn blaring out in the background. It's only audible when you're close to it, helping in the immersion. Down the walkway stairs, there's this peaceful pool section where passengers can take a dip whenever they like. Granted, they're content with Daisy staring at them in their bathing suits. You can even take a dip with your vehicle to clean it. How thoughtful. If you look off to the side here, you'll notice a platform and diving board, which is pretty cool, but I would have placed a diving board in the play area, somewhere around here, where maybe it could be tilted up a little bit, and if you use a mushroom, you can jump the pool. Something like that would have been neat. The Mario Kart 7 version of this course actually lets you enter this pool and come out the other side, which is a much more efficient way of cleaning your vehicle. You can actually see passengers in the form of Piantas cheering you on over here, and next to them are parasols and lounge chairs for their viewing pleasure. And if that wasn't enough, these windows on this wall allow any passengers inside to view what's going on too. Oh, and we've got to talk about the floor pattern. There's daisies all over the place on the main route, with a big old daisy branching off off from the pool. This section alone has so much care put into it. I get pretty sad sometimes when I hear people say things like, it's a game, not real life, things don't have to be believable, because I feel like if developers had that mindset of not properly selling the game's world, then we would miss out on charming locations like this one. I will always appreciate it when a game goes the extra mile to put thought in for fleshing out its world. After driving through this section via the main route, or this cheeky side one along the wall, you can bump 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 your way down the stairs, through this hallway, and enter the dining hall of doom, where it looks like somebody greased up the legs of these tables and chairs cause they're flying all over the place. Who approved of this? I think what's most funny about it is that there are some tables and chairs that are properly sitting still behind these posts and tape, which makes you wonder what in the world happened for the rest of them to behave like this. Do you wonder if it was done on purpose? Maybe Daisy thought it'd be funny to just let them loose. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Happen, right? We're only on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. <sighs> we might need some more lifeboats. You can also see the item boxes rolling as well. All of this implies that the ship itself is tilting left and right, which you can actually see when looking out the window, and more clearly see when you look out from the bow of the ship. I think it's pretty cool that the devs actually put in the work to make the entire course tilt instead of merely implying it does by having objects slide around. It really gives you that seasick vibe. As you drive further into the interior, you'll notice the set of doors, which if you use a mushroom against in the middle of it, Nothing will happen, but something really should, right? If you avoid driving into the hole here, then you'll simply continue onward to the front of the ship. But if you do drop into the hole, then you'll enter the engine room, where it's clearly hard at work trying to keep this disaster of a ship from being a sequel. There are also bits of what appear to be cargo laying about. This fan indicates an exhaust pipe, which launches you out like a cannon, placing you on the front of the ship like the main route. I actually prefer the Mario Kart 7 version of this section, because it's been completely completely remodeled into an aquarium, complete with tons of sea life, which makes me wonder what happened to the engine room. Maybe they decided they didn't need one. This ship runs on good vibes alone. On the front of the ship, you'll find the bow mentioned earlier, where you can relax as all the racers pass you up. I think it would have been neat to place a double item box here, but hey, maybe the point of this place was to just chill out. We can see some huge gears sticking out here at the front, which makes sense considering the engine room is below. The final section of the course has a couple life preservers hanging down, which you can bump into so that they hit other players to annoy them. Normally, the ending of a course is some big spectacle, but it's a nice change of pace for Daisy Cruiser to just let you off easy. While some may feel like this course doesn't represent Daisy much, I disagree. This cruise ship 
represents both sides of her. There's her chaotic side, as shown by the fact that we're, you know, having an incredibly dangerous race on a cruise ship, and there's also her more graceful side. Cause although she can get crazy, her name is Daisy, and she's commonly associated with flowers, which there are plenty of motifs of seen all over the ship. A ship that, racing aside, exudes a relaxing vibe, no doubt with help from the tropical theme playing in the background, which fits the more graceful aspect of Daisy perfectly. You even get to see this course while racing on other courses, such as here with Peach Beach, where it's far off from the coast, and here with Yoshi Circuit, where it's far off from the island. Mario Kart aside, Daisy Cruiser has also been used as a stadium once in Mario Super Sluggers, and at nighttime no less. I don't know how they managed to remodel the deck to be used as a baseball stadium, but it's impressive nonetheless. Gotta say, I love this ship, and hope it makes more appearances in the future via cute cameos where water's involved in the Mario universe, and as a course in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Pass. But before we close off, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Genuine story here, when I barely uploaded the Chow Garden video in time for June Zoom, uploaded, not published by the way, there's a difference, I unplugged from the internet for the night because I was irritated at myself for not managing my time well and not being as productive as I could have been. And that's where Skillshare came into the mix. Skillshare is an online learning community with an insane amount of classes for anyone who wants to take up new skills and up their game. I took this course on Mastering Productivity by Thomas Frank, and despite this being a seriously complicated issue for me, I learned a lot from this guy's lessons because of how well structured they were and how well he communicated each of his points. And it's lessons like these that I now follow, so videos like the one you just watched actually come out on time for now on. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. That's an entire month of soaking up knowledge on whatever you like here. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think it was good, so go check it out. Thanks for watching, consider becoming a member of this channel, and I'll see you tomorrow for more of the June Zoom. Take care.